In this video, we're going to demonstrate an example model building workflow for creating an automated interpretation system. First, we're going to take our interpretation report and expand upon that in some local neighborhood of our seismic data. We're then going to train a model with this initial uh, set of interpreted lines. We're going to use this trained model to predict away from where we've made our interpretation. We're going to QC this prediction. If the prediction is not equivalent to what we would have interpreted ourselves, then we're going to correct these predictions. And then we're going to merge these corrected predictions to our training data set, expanding our training data set. We're going to retrain a model given this expanded training data set and once again predict away from where we have uh, interpretation. We're then going to iterate through this workflow until the predicted interpretation is indistinguishable from what the user itself would have interpreted. So I've gone ahead and I've corrected the labeling that I have on the cross line. So it matches the labeling that I have on the inline, which of course I'm able to read off of the interpretation report that I have. So we can see that everything's lining up and tying nicely. I've then gone ahead and I've extended it out beyond what I have a reference for. So this inline number 1450, I have a document that shows me where the top and base of, uh, well, the top of this girl and the base of this Madurong formation is. Um, and so that I can copy that. So but I've moved on 10 lines and I've repeated the process. So you'll see that seismic data is fairly correlated. And we can see that each of these lines look pretty similar and that I've made sure everything is tying with this cross line that I've, I've created. If I go into the labeling section, let's go to the cross line, the inlines. We can see this is my reference. And now I'm extrapolating out somewhat. Pressing A, you can toggle between them. Make sure that we're following the same reflectors each case and so we have a little data set that looks good so the next thing I want to do and this is really going to be up to your experimentation but in this case I don't want to have to keep interpreting um, for one thing I'm not and particularly good at it and so what I want the to do is to actually train a machine learning algorithm that's then going to give me some guide to predicting uh, in and around these inline numbers that I have. So to do that, I'm going to navigate to the AI tab. And you can see in the AI tab, I have my default labels, label one, which is what I've been creating. I have models that I could train. So I'm going to create a new, a new model. And then I have a list of all the lines that I've um, labeled so far. So from a sort of data science perspective, these lines are going to be the source of what we call training data. And this training data is going to be used to teach um, an algorithm to um, learn to replicate the work that I've been doing. Um, I'm going to submit a job that's going to just take these three lines as input, and it's just going to try to predict 10 lines on as I've been doing. So I'll hit submit for that job, and it will just be deployed out to our cloud computing infrastructure and I'll come back to you when that's done. So we started in the AI tab. When you launch a job, when you submit it, it will automatically navigate you to the jobs tab. So you can see the job in the jobs tab, we have some information about the volume and the, the labels used, um, tells us what our training lines are. So the lines that we interpreted tells us what line we're going to interpret on. And then you'll see we provide a log. You might not really need to make sense, too much sense of any of this. The real takeaway here is it just prints things out onto the screen so that you know it's alive. You know that it's doing something. It gives you a bit of a heartbeat. Um, this job has run, and I haven't bored you with waiting. The training time was 228 seconds, so it takes a few minutes. Um, and now we've trained a neural network. And because we configured that neural network to predict after it was trained, we've been provided with the prediction here, which from my eye looks pretty similar to what I was labeling it. Um, and now we're faced with 
um, some choices. So we have a prediction. We only made one prediction, so there's only one here. We can merge. What merge will do um, is accept, automatically accept uh, this prediction and add it to our training data set. Alternatively, we can merge and edit, which has the same effect, except that it will navigate us back to the label page where we can make corrections. In general, you would expect that there would be some corrections needed um, to the predicted model, at least in the early stages of, of training. Let's just compare. So this was our reference that we got from our document. We can toggle back and forth. And we're fairly happy. Let's go over to the view. And we can make sure that everything ties. Oops, that's not a valid line. There we go. And so that's tying nicely. So this line was completely, was automatically generated uh, based on um, a neural network that we trained. This model is uh, probably is reasonably accurate within the, this neighborhood. Now that we've proven that we have a reasonably good model in the neighborhood of the data that we understand, we're going to go back into the AI tab. We're going to select the model that we just trained. It gets a funny name, Smar Goose in this case. And then we're going to run a prediction. And I'm going to run a prediction um, throughout the entire volume. In fact, and I'll, I'll actually train at the same time too. So that will go from line 1000 to 2000, which is the range of our data. And we'll go at a stride of say 100, which means that it's now going to take this smart goose model that we've just created. It's going to run an algorithm to retrain it, which in principle should be a lot faster than the original training because it would, should converge a lot more quickly. Um, and then it's going to apply it out to the whole volume with a stride of 100. And that's the goal here is to expand our set of training data by using the reasonably good model that we have that's valid in the neighborhood of uh, line 40 and 50. So we click there and it's going to take us over to the prediction page. It's now waiting for resources to be allocated, uh, GPU resources to be allocated so that it can continue. Now the resources are allocated and it will run for some time. So Smart Goose has been trained and has carried out its prediction um, on the lines that we, we indicated. Um, so the output of that is now a set of predictions that we can navigate through using the drop down menu here. So just to be clear, it's not our expectation that the model Smart Goose that we initially trained ought to generalize particularly well from over the entirety of this volume. And the reason for that is that we only really trained it in and around line 1450. So we expect it to do a very good job of, of interpreting there, and then perhaps a relatively poor job as it moves away. So if we go to line 1000, which looks very different to line 1400 in a lot of ways. Um, we can see that there's a lot of places where this model is missing. But one thing we can see though is that it seems to have identified at this top fairly effectively. And I'm going to merge and edit this data. So I'm not going to relabel it. I'm simply going to correct it. And I, you might find, and I typically find, that the task of correcting the interpretation is somewhat easier um, than the task of originating it. So we are actually saving ourselves some effort, in my, my opinion. Another thing we can do to kind of validate that, let's go to line 1000. And we can see that, indeed, the top of this prediction on line 1000 is tying with our cross line sort of reference that we've got here. So we'll go through in order merging and correcting each of these lines and then I'll get back to you. So now 
you know, while we can view these these lines and compare it with our cross line, another thing we can do is actually just to interpolate out the horizon um, across the entire volume. So this looks a bit rough. You can see a little bit that the faults are perhaps coming in here. And that's because it's just done a simple linear interpolation um, from between all the lines that we've labeled. And we can say it looks smooth, there's nothing that looks unphysical, although having said that, this looks like it might be somewhat of an error, perhaps line 1900. Let's just navigate around. So it looks like there's been an error. So let's just go ahead and correct that. And that could just be that there's, a, oh, there we go. Just this one pixel that I, I didn't remove when I was correcting the label. So now that's gone, let's go back. And everything's reactive. And so the little anomaly is gone. We can also look at, so we've looked at the top of the, of the formation. We can look at the base. Everything looks good, except for where we had the dead traces. That looks fine. Okay, so now we have a much larger training data set. We can go ahead and make a model that we will expect should generalize across the entire volume. So to do this, we have a couple of choices. We could use Smart Goose, the model that we've been adapting. We could train a completely new model from scratch if we wanted to. Some of that's going to depend on your um, needs, your experimentation. I'm going to retrain Smart Goose. So Smart Goose, remember, has been trained with lines 1453 to 1480. Um, but I'm going to use the additional training data. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, after it's trained, and I'm going to predict out on every line. Now you could train this model first. Actually, it would be better if we trained it first and got a few test lines. So let's do this. 2000, do a stride of 200. So we're going to, re we're going to retrain Smart Goose given our complete set of training data. We're then going to step across um, and we're going to predict on five lines, five test lines, just to make sure this algorithm has converged. If it looks a bit weird, you know, we might want to go back and iterate one more time. Um, but let's just see how this guy goes. So the last round of training Smart Goose has completed. You can see this is all of the inlines that we used to build this model. With our initial set of inlines around 1450, we developed a model that could predict to 1480. That was our first version of Smart Goose. We then trained out on a stride of 100. So from 1000 to 2000, inline 1000 to 2000, we then trained and we predicted and then we corrected the prediction. And now we're at a point where we're QCing the output of that model. In this case, we've predicted on uh, every 200th line away from where we had initially trained by 50 lines, at least in these cases. And we can see that this model appears to have generalized very well. So these are predictions that we've that have been made um, and do not seem to require any correction um, in order to, at least in my view, replicate the interpretation that I was trying to make. The next step would be to go to the AI page again. We have a choice. We could retrain the model given all of the data we looked at. There may be some value in that. Or we can simply click on these lines to remove them and then set up and select our my, my Smart Goose model. And now we want to predict out an entire volume and the goal there would be to extract horizons and other data from the uh, interpretation. So we've got a minimum line 1000, maximum line 2140, and we could move in a step size of one if we wanted to predict on every line. Realistically, we could probably predict on every two to four lines and it wouldn't really make too much difference to the horizons that we're, ex we're extracting. Click Submit Job, and then we would be finished, and we would have a complete interpretation, and we would have a model that we've built that can automate that interpretation.